Hello, my name is Elliot Stapleton. I'm an attorney with Cornette at Meyer Rush in Stapleton in Cincinnati, Ohio. And today I'm here to talk about an important estate planning topic. Specifically, I'm here to talk about transfer and death designations, also known as beneficiary designations. Uh, and what I found is there are a lot of individuals who have a misconception that using a transfer on death, which is also known as a TOD, uh, solves every problem at the time of death. Uh, while it's true using a TOD can avoid probate in many cases, uh, it doesn't actually solve every issue that can come about when a person dies. So the assets may avoid probate and go to an individual, but what if that individual is not yet 18 years of age? So this would be if you have minor children. But what a lot of people are surprised to learn, even if you have a beneficiary listed, if that beneficiary is under 18, the assets still go into probate court. Uh, so they're managed by a guardian in probate until the child reaches the age of 18. So this could be many years. If the child's five years old at the time of your death, the assets would be uh, stuck in court for 13 additional years. And then also what happens when the child reaches the age of 18 and goes off to college? Well, when they reach 18, they are considered an adult. Uh, but not every 18 year old is as uh, mature as they need to be to receive a large life insurance policy, for example. And in many cases, parents have actually purchased life insurance policies for the sole purpose of taking care of their children's education expenses if that parent is deceased. Well, I don't know about you, but 18 wasn't the peak of my maturity level. And if uh, I had received a large life insurance policy, it might not have worked out too well. And then also too, even if the child is out of college uh, over the age of 25, let's say, in some cases, you may not want that child to receive a significant amount of money all at once, but that's exactly what would happen. And then two, uh, what if a beneficiary has a disability? Uh, so they may be disabled, uh, and if they receive an outright distribution of assets, Unfortunately, those assets that you've worked so hard to earn might be used to just repay their debt to the government. Uh, they've been receiving government benefits. And it may actually make them ineligible for government benefits for a period of time. Uh, and then also what happens if the beneficiary happens to be deceased? Uh, you can place a contingent beneficiary on most uh, designations. But unfortunately, that designation, that contingent beneficiary and the primary for that matter, are subject to an agreement that you may not even know that you have entered into. Uh, for example, I, that customer agreement with Charles Schwab is actually subject to two state laws. So some of the accounts are subject to California law, some are subject to Nevada law. E-Trade is New York, Massachusetts for Fidelity, MetLife, I, I couldn't actually even find a, a choice of law in their documents, and Vanguard is New York. Now these are fine institutions, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but the point is that this contract, at any point in time that you've, you are using to distribute assets to your family, could be changed without your consent. Uh, you know, the effective date will continue to update, and if you went and looked at your documents now, and if you're even able to find this customer agreement, what you'll probably find is that it has changed many times over the years. So uh, when you're transferring a, a significant amount of your assets, it's probably not ideal to lose control over what would happen to those assets if one of your beneficiaries is deceased. So what are some alternatives? Well, one is, to use a TOD, but instead of distributing the assets directly to beneficiaries, to first distribute assets to a trust. And by doing that, you can still distribute assets to beneficiaries, but for those beneficiaries who are under the age of 18, you get to control those assets within the trust. You get to decide who manages those assets and when they are distributed. The assets are not 
locked up in the probate court. Uh, you've appointed someone to manage those assets and distribute based on standards that you have approved. And if those assets need to be distributed for health, education, maintenance and support, you get to decide uh, the final point at which those assets go to a beneficiary. And it may be a much later age than 18, and for many clients that's definitely the case. And then in addition, you can have a contingency plan to say, if one of my beneficiaries is disabled, don't just distribute the assets and give it to their creditors or give it to the government to repay their debt, but rather use those assets to supplement their needs, to fill in the gaps that their government provided benefits just don't cover. And then also too, if you wanted to address creditor protection for your children, and it doesn't always have to be if your child has problems with spending, it could be that you are concerned that they may get divorced someday and you want to make sure uh, the assets that you worked so hard to earn uh, are protected and stay in the family. It could also be that your child is extremely responsible uh, and maybe they're a physician. Uh, there's creditor protection uh, that can be put in place to make sure the assets in your trust are protected, distributed for the benefit of your child, but yet not accessible to their creditors. And this would hold true if your child is a a physician, an accountant, a financial advisor, an architect, an attorney, structural engineer, anyone who could be sued personally if they have a bad day at work, uh, it could be protected uh, by a trust. And then also too, you get to create the contingency, contingency plan. You get to decide what happens if one of your beneficiaries is deceased and then the subsequent beneficiaries after that. Uh, it's not a contract with uh, a third party that could be changed at any time. You control the terms and you get to decide what happens and when assets are distributed. So by comparison, you can see both assets of a waiver, both mechanisms, like transfer on death, and transfer on death with the trust, avoid probate. It's just that the transfer on death to the trust, when compared, provides a lot more protection and control over the actual distribution of assets. So in some cases, I talk to people about the benefits that I just covered, and someone will say, well, none of that applies to my situation. My kids are fine. They're not doctors. They know how to spend their money. They're never going to be sued. They're never going to get divorced. They're never going to be disabled, and nobody's going to die. Well, be that as it may, maybe it's not very accurate, uh, they then want to use a transfer on death designation and think that, that still solves everything. Uh, but what you'll find is that for most people, you have multiple children. And what you don't realize is if you give assets using a TOD, the asset transfer is immediate. It's made directly to those beneficiaries. But even if you do that, there are expenses related to your debt. Uh, funeral, burial, cremation, uh, if you have a home, property taxes, insurance, gas, electric, and your final income taxes still have to be paid. Uh, and typically what will happen in this situation where there uh, are assets that are just distributed directly using a TOD, one child steps up and pays the expenses. And in some cases, all of the siblings are perfectly happy paying the other sibling back. Uh, but the fact is that that child who stepped up and took the risk of paying those expenses is not repaid. Uh, and the unfortunate part is that if they make those payments, maybe the siblings disagree on how much was paid for the funeral or, or silly things like that, which can really cause problems in the family. And in other cases, uh, maybe one of the siblings pays and the other children are not necessarily as, uh, well, as, as understanding on what to do with money when you receive it at death. Uh, they may see it as an opportunity to spend rather than an opportunity to save. And it's possible they don't even have the funds necessary to pay their share. Uh, another consideration is if you have real estate. And I have calls all the time where people say, I'm going to add my children to the house. 
uh, when I give my children the house directly and TOD it to them. What a lot of people don't realize is if you give a house directly to your children, be it putting it in their name now, which there are a lot of problems with that, or making it transfer on death directly to them, is that if those children are married, you have effectively given the spouse, all of those children, an ownership interest in that house. Before that house can be sold, every spouse of your child has to approve. Uh, they have to release what's called dower. And in some cases, that's perfectly fine, it's easy, but if one of those children is going through a divorce or uh, just has a spouse who is disagreeable on things that have occurred, it can create a real problem. Uh, and beyond that, just actually claiming the assets can in some cases be problematic. So for most uh, accounts, you have to have consensus on all the parties to submit their documentation, to sign off, so that those assets can be distributed. Well, if you have a beneficiary who lives in Singapore on the other side of the world, it may be hard to reach them. Uh, it could also be that you have a beneficiary who, well, they're just not very receptive and keep losing the form and uh, can't seem to get it together to send it in. And that can be a real problem uh, because some uh, people out there have high concentrations of a single stock in their name, meaning, let's say if they worked at GE or P&G, they may have held on to a lot of stock in that company because of their you know, emotional tie to the business. Well, a few years ago, we saw what happened to General Electric. I mean, if this situation was going on and uh, the stock just perpetually kept going more and more down, it would have been unfortunate if one of the beneficiaries just said, I don't feel like signing. And that is possible. In some cases, a beneficiary will just refuse to sign. Perhaps they disagree about the funeral or what was done before mom or dad's death or just the general circumstances and they'll create a roadblock. Uh, that customer agreement I was referring to earlier, and B, it, it's important to know that those agreements by and large have uh, mediation requirement provisions. So you have to go mediate or arbitrate a matter. Uh, and typically you saw that there were a lot of different states, you have to do it in that state. So if there's a dispute among the parties about the distribution of assets, you might have to end up hiring an attorney in New York to mediate the distribution of assets. So by comparison, uh, there are a lot of advantages to having the assets instead of going directly to the beneficiaries to first go to a trust. Uh, on the expense side, the first item, the dollar sign there, uh, here, the assets go into the trust and the trustee, the person that you decide, gets to approve the payment of any expenses, funeral bill, all of the costs and final income taxes related to your estate. For the house, the trustee is the one in charge of selling that real property and approving that sale. And for the claim forms, the trustee is the one who fills out those forms, gets things done, and then of course diversifies assets to avoid the General Electric issue I, I talked about earlier. And then only when the assets are completely resolved, expenses are paid, do the assets, the net assets, get distributed to the beneficiaries. So when you combine these benefits here, you can see how simply using a TOD to avoid probate in some cases is, doesn't give you nearly as much protection as the creation of a trust. Here, the assets are protected and you get control over making sure those assets go to the right person at the right time. So I appreciate you taking time and reviewing this webinar today. Feel free to contact me directly if you have any questions. Thank you.